I think it's pretty safe to say that here everyone has at least played a Papa's games once. And if you didn't, well, allow me to explain how a Papa's game works. Oh, I'm gonna get so sick of saying Papa so many times in this video, Jesus Christ. Also, I know this looks stupid, but I spent three hours trying to make a fucking character sprite. To put it simply, I can't draw, I can't even make pixel art, so I went with this. Anyway, you're dropped into a restaurant that is made for one specific type of food. Usually the backstory is kinda sad actually. You're always forced into it, that being because of a car crash or because the owner just left or something. Now, you can play these games two ways. One, you can perfectly make all the dishes and do everything correct and go through the levels or days as they call them in this game and hey it's actually really fun to play these games like they're meant to be played unlocking new stuff and decorating your establishment can be a lot of fun but there's also number two Oh boy, number two. You 100% fuck up the dishes. And you do this by either putting half your stock of lettuce on a burger, or by giving the people undercooked chicken wings so they get severe food poisoning. Yeah, there are actually quite a lot of ways to mess up someone's order. And it can be completely hilarious because for some reason they just always come back. They just don't care if they've had a terrible order the other two days. In this video I'm gonna go through the history of the Papa's games, their rise and their future since a lot of Will be changing especially since flash games will be game ended in december of 2020 i'm also gonna talk about the two go games and hd games basically app games but first let's look at their history So let's begin in the beginning. Flipline Studios, the creator of the games, were founded back in 2004. Hey, that's when I was born. Whoa. Nobody gives a shit. Hey, shut the fuck up. They created their very first game in 2006, called Papa Louis When Pizzas Attack. It's basically a platformer where you capture pizzas. Why did I play this as a child? But it was just a platformer and before this they apparently made a comic. What? But this got cancelled and they made their platformer. A year later in 2007, they created the OG Papa's Pizzeria. Now what I'm gonna do is quickly go over each Papa's game and tell what new stuff they brought to the table, etc. So without further ado, let's begin. Papa's Pizzeria was released in August of 2007. And this game sucks! I mean yeah, it's the first Papa's game, but Jesus Christ. Wasn't the best to say the least. I mean, this game doesn't have unlockable ingredients it doesn't have stuff to buy in the shop and i don't think anyone gets an erection after unlocking big Polly or something i mean the only real purpose of this game is to create your own mona lisa on a pizza but still the second game papa's burgery i was released in december of 2010 i thought this was the first papa's game but apparently i'm a fucking idiot anyway this game introduced the shop to buy upgrades which is pretty nice even though the decorations you buy are in specific place but still it's nice in this game it's the goal to stack up as much mayonnaise as possible on wally's order there you go wally why doesn't wally love my cum Fucking asexual piece of shit. Then we have Papa Stako Mia. This game was released in 2011. The wiki doesn't say which month, but to be fair, nobody cares. Also, this game finally introduced unlockable ingredients, which is about fucking time. And this game introduces closers, the people that are supposed to be nitpicky, even though they all already are. And this game introduced Jojo, the food critic. Unfortunately, he's not Jonathan Joestar, but we can't all get what we want. Anyway, if this guy's happy with his order, he'll give you a blue ribbon, which gives you some more money for a couple of days. And now you can buy fantastic hats, isn't it wonderful? I want to die. Then the game I played the most, Papa's Freezeria. This time released in August of 2011, this game features diabetes instead of flesh shit. Anyway, this game features more unlockable ingredients, along with now being able to choose where you put your new decoration, and also having floors and walls. And now we have Papa's... Oh my fucking... God, how many games do I need to go over? 1, 2, 4, um, 8, 10. Oh, for fuck's sake. Papa's Pancake Korea was released in 1945. 
after the Nazis surrendered, Churchill made the game too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even finishing that. Anyhow, their game was released in March of 2012. And in this game, I mean... Do I even need to explain? You make fucking pancakes. And, and waffles, or French fucking toast, or whatever the fuck. Also, this game introduced the mini-games that give you a retarded looking reward and a slight feeling of why the fuck did I just do that? And parades so you can see Jojo's ass cheeks in all its glory. <laughs> <laughs> then Papa's Wingery, yeah, which was released in June of 2012. And I don't know why, but the customers really like to get two wings and an entire winter stock of vegetables. Even Povisher agrees with me here, look. Quinn looks like a complete bitch. Oh yes, three chicken wings, nine carrots, and three ranches? Are you trying to make me fucking explode, Quinn? Oh, I love Povisher. Now you can actually create a slave to work for you. And I always create Jojo characters since I'm a fucking loser. And now you can buy and get clothes instead of just hats, which is really nice. And as we continue, we get Papa's Hot Dog Ria. This game was released in November 2012. And in this game, Futurine is now categorized by a theme, which no one actually cares about, but I don't want to see a comment like, Well, Lufke, I'll have you know, in Papa's Hot Dog Ria, you have categorized Futurine. Shut up! Jesus Christ, I don't care. I mean, what am I saying? No one actually watches this channel apart from a fucking skeleton. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Number 8. Papa's Cupcake Area. Number 5. Water molecules. So Papa's Cupcake Area takes place in, I don't know, fucking Antarctica, I have no idea. Which was released in August of 2013. And in this game you drop shit on a cake and people like it. I'm mature. Now we have holidays in this game, which is really nice actually, because I think it adds a lot more reason to continue with one of their games. If you don't know, holidays are, well, holidays. But what they do is they give you certain ingredients fitting the holiday for a short amount of time, that being until the holiday changes to a different one. And some customers even have a different outfit if it's their favorite holiday, which I really like. <sighs> Five more to go. Come on. Papa's Pastoria was created in the heavens in December 2013. Also, Papa's Pastoria should have been the original since, you know, pasta equals Italian. Papa's is also kind of Italian. Please, no, I'm not racist, I swear. Anyway, in this game you have, uh, what do you have again? Adjustable volume settings. Holy shit, what the fuck? Papa's Donateria was released in June 2014. I still don't know why I'm even telling you when they were created. You probably don't give a fuck but it's my video hmm. um from what i've seen this game didn't introduce much so uh papa's cheeseria is what the fuck is this title papa's cheeseria was made in june 2015 in this game you make sandwiches and shit which is fucking good mate uh this game introduced the today special which is a really nice feature it basically means sometimes you get a customer that brings a letter with him and if they're happy you get that stupid letter and inside is a special why customers bring letters with recipes to a restaurant is beyond me but fuck it it's really nice anyway this is just a recipe and customers will order this but what makes the these things so nice if you make a customer that ordered the special happy you get a special reward that depends on the special this could be times two tips or plus two game tickets or whatever the fuck and you also have some sort of star system which means if you serve it five times successfully you get some sort of clothing or something Papa's Bakery was created by Ronald McDonald in March 2016 or something, I don't know. In this title, you bake pies, if that wasn't blatantly obvious already. And this game introduced stickers, which are basically replacements for the achievements. But now, if you have a certain selection of stickers, customers will unlock a new outfit, which is usually pretty lame, but still, it's a nice feature. Okay, so, <laughs> the next one is Sushi Ria, and since I'm some sort of racist and... <laughs> No, I'm, I'm not racist, I just find this really funny. I'm gonna speak Japanese. <laughs> sing song, sing song, Japanese. Must declare war on China, yes. Nani, nigga, song song, sing sing. Sing song, Hiroshima bomb, sing song. Asun sham, rice land, must have noodles. Rice fields, rice fields, sang rice. Hope you like my impression. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna get fucking terminated off this side. <laughs> 
And then the final one, Papa Scooper here, released in July 2018. This is a pretty kind of recent game. No, it's not, but still, it's the most recent. And in this game, it's not quite what you think, since you get a cookie, put ice cream on it, and then toppings. So it's kind of Papa's Cookie Scooper Sheldon Bazingria. <laughs> Bazingria. <laughs> But this game doesn't introduce much, although it's really fucking great, not gonna lie. Holy shit, we finally done it. Fucking so, so guys, guys, we did it. We reached a quarter of a million. Yeah, I get it. This was quite long, but don't worry. The other two parts will be much shorter. So anyway, now for part two, the rise of Papa Louie games. Now, for this, I'm gonna take you back to the mid-2000s, where Funny Red F in the chat became extremely popular. Back in the day, Flash games were the fucking shit. I still remember going to school, getting the permission to do uh, schoolwork, and just playing fucking Strike Force Heroes. I think almost everyone above the age of 10 can remember these golden days. But why am I bringing this up? Well, as I think a lot of you know, Papa's games originated from Flash games, and Flash games consisted of a shit ton of platformers. I mean it makes sense, the games were easy to make and the way they work is very easy to understand. Just get from point A to B. And it's to be expected that Papa Louie when Pizza's Attack was gonna be popular as well. And when Papa's Pizzeria was released again a lot of people played it because 1. It's a Flash game. 2. It was recommended to people who played the original. And with more of these Papa's games being released on top of the popularity of Flash, you could pretty much much say that this is how these games became popular on PC. But there's also a rise part too because Flipline Studios decided to make these games available on the get-go for iOS and Android, labeling them as to go or HD versions. Now this was a very smart move because think about it, these games are perfect to play while you're away from home on vacation in a warm country with nothing to do. Gameplay is just more sit back and relax and just casual gameplay, which is perfect for games to play on your phone. Not to mention how these versions usually have more content than the original. These games were already fun, but being able to play them on the go made it so much better. And even to this day, Papa's Freezeria to go is one of the most purchased and liked games in the App Store. So yeah, the rise of these games are from Flash games and from making them available on phones and tablets. See, I told you this was gonna be shorter. So now the final part, the future of the Papa Louie games. So now that Flash Player will be shut down, what will be the future of the Papa Louie games? Well, it's kind of obvious. Two Go versions for phones and tablets. Why not the HD versions? Well, I don't necessarily know why, but it seems like they have stopped making HD versions of the games. But don't worry, the Two Go games are just as compatible in terms of graphics. Well, except for the first Two Go games that they released. But yeah, even to this day, they are busy making ports of the Flash games to a Two Go version. But what if you're an epic pro gamer PC master? And do you want to play these games on PC? I'm pretty sure you've heard of Bluestacks at least once. Yeah, Bluestacks or Mimi or any other Android emulator is the answer. Now, on um, especially Bluestacks at the moment, these games run the best in terms of performance. So just install Bluestacks, then use a fucking AP key or something to download the games for free. Oh, it's fucking legal, man. Hey, what the fuck? Nah, I don't blame you for pirating this game. I mean, the Flash games were 100% free on PC, so I ain't gonna spend no fucking money on this can't. Although, if you do buy the games, that's a lot better since you're supporting them financially, but still, I don't blame you at all if you pirate these games. So, a little summary of the future. Flash games will die, but the two Go games and the few HD versions won't, and they're still making two Go versions of the games that were only on PC, like Papa's Bakery or Papa Sushi Ria. If they will make completely new Papa Louie games like fucking Papa's Bazingeria, like a brand new title, well, no idea, but they are working on the games that aren't for mobile devices yet. And if you want to play these games on PC, just use Bluestacks. There are 500 million tutorials out there on how to install it, so go ahead. But I don't want to end the video just yet. I still want to talk a bit about the 2GO and HD games and basically why they are really nice. So all the 2 
few Go games and HD games, well, except for these ones, have holidays, the Today Special system, stickers, customer outfits, and mini games. Just all the latest features of the games, which is great. Although it is a sin against humanity how Papa's Frigeria 2 Go isn't remastered to have all these features, but we're stuck with a very old port. Uh, hey, hey, Flipline Studios, could you like at some point make this please? Yes? I would really appreciate that and the fans of course as well, yes, please make. So that was the history and the rise and the future of the Papa Louie games. I hope you enjoyed my mental breakdown. This video was a lot of fun to make, but uh, now I've got a... Uh... I've made a severe and continuous laps in my judgment and, and I, I don't, don't expect, expect to be, be forgiven, forgiven. <laughs> I've made a severe I want to talk to you guys What's up guys, it's me, Paul Man. Today I'm gonna play this Minecraft forest map, lol I don't care that that was 2018, it will it will live on in my heart forever. I was actually gonna use a camera for this, of bought one, but I don't have enough storage on my micro USB, so I can't record shit. Anyway, like any other video on my channel, I've got some boring shit to address in the end, because, as always, I don't upload like I'm supposed to. And was it because I was going through a rough period in my life, or because my Roblox account got deleted? No, it's because I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Yep, I thought my microphone was dead, even though Audacity just connected to a different device. I thought my microphone fucking died. And I actually bought a new mic, but that thing, even though it was more expensive, had a voice quality that was so much worse. I don't know how, but fuck it, fine, I send it back anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, also, I quickly want to address two things. One, the uh, most important one, uh, a simple rule that I want you gamers to know, if I don't upload that doesn't mean I've stopped or I've quit YouTube. Kind of makes sense, but I want to make this clear. Even if I'm gone for eight months, that doesn't mean shite. If I will stop making videos, I will post something like I quit lol bye. So again, if I don't upload, that doesn't mean I'm quitting because I'm taking time for my videos since school exists and I also want to play video games. So for two, it's this. Also, we've gotten 50 subs. I don't know why, all I do is shout at games and harass my friends, but I guess people like it, I don't know. Thanks for 50 subs, I'm, I'm almost at 150 now, what the fuck happened? I guess I just shouldn't upload then, because I get subs if I don't upload. I know that's not the case, but Jesus Christ, I'm amazed how fucking much my channel has grown since then. I know I sound like funny smash man, like, thanks for the two subscribers, but from 50 to close to 150, like, I'm, I'm amazed. And also, that is not even the best part. Just, just look at this. Also, can I just say, like, why the fuck does my Orange Night video have, like, 300 views? 19 likes. It's disgusting. thousand views at least 1600 human creatures saw that abomination of I i've got no words fucking hell and the scariest thing it's not like when you watch for like two seconds it counts as a view it counts as a view if you watch like a couple of minutes of the video so it's safe to say that at least 1600 people saw that fucking video 1600 if i'm in a room with 10 people i already shit myself the fuck and all my other character reviews got so many fucking views as well like oh my god i mean it's clear people like my castle crashers content so yeah i'll happily make more but pfft. So yeah next video will be grow night review uh, and this time for real ba 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 before i go have you heard of this awesome rpg raid shadow legend <laughs> 